What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we are back on the Plymouth GTX project. Last episode, we did a really cool IFS system from Control Freak Suspension. Went ahead and did the IFS system. We did a new steering rack. We connected the steering system and we cleaned up the whole engine bay. We have a couple more things we need to get out before we start working on the engine bay, but we also have subframe connectors we're gonna be installing this episode as well. Not sure how these are gonna fit. I don't even know how they go on. I just know I have a box over in the corner here and they look like they got some nice cuts in them. So we'll probably start with that first before I have to climb into the engine bay and plug all these holes. We're not gonna be doing like crazy sheet metal on the engine bay. What we're going to be doing is cleaning up all of these random holes that hold all the old brackets, these big holes here. We're gonna cut this edge off and we're gonna weld this edge so we can smooth the frame rails out. And then just making everything just whole. Our old holes here for the other, the old shocks are gonna go away. Just smoothing it all out so that it's all one nice piece. So when the engine sits in here, it's like a piece of jewelry. We also have some stuff on the firewall we're gonna close up. And I'm toying with the idea of getting rid of the windshield wiper motor. There's a giant motor that, that bolted right there. And so we would have to cut that entire piece out smooth it up we're going to definitely get rid of that original plug there and we're going to get rid of the cable throttle that controlled the old carburetor because we're doing fly-by wire on our hellcat swap we're going to get some attention on this engine bay get this looking good and just start plugging away at getting this thing all smoothed out you want to stick around at the end of the episode though guys because the engine is on its way by the end of this episode we'll have the engine here and it is a spicy unit so let's get to work i'm going to roll the welder over right now and uh start getting this engine bay looking more presentable. Well, that was fun. Not. So we got one side all prepped, marked on the bottom of the car and just prepped everywhere that the subframe connector is going to lie. As you can see, we have a rear subframe here that your, your rear axle bolts into and everything like that. You know, your rear drivetrain. You have a front subframe here, cross member, goes into this subframe that comes up, grabs the engine and everything. But in between, you're just shooting in the wind with just regular old sheet metal. So if this car got in a crash, this whole thing would buckle. You know, the floor is just sheet metal. So these subframe connectors are adding support where you don't have it from the factory. So, you know, welds from this end of the subframe to this end of the subframe is gonna stop this torsional flex when you're putting power down on this car. And it's also going to increase stability. The suspension's gonna work better. I think this is gonna be a great step in the right direction, especially when we put the four link in the back of the car and convert the rear end to coil, coil on spring as well. And it's really gonna give this car a really nice modern ride and get rid of any sort of slot that there is in this chassis. So we got one side done. This is a lot of grinding. It was a lot of fun. You know, there's 40 plus years of dirt and debris stuck to the bottom of this chassis. So I'm gonna go ahead and wedge this up there now. I changed my mind, these things suck. <laughs> I got the passenger side in there now, and it's kind of matches, but look at that big old gap, boop. So that means I gotta cut the whole thing, that weird profile. See, it's touch in here, touch in here. I mean, it's close, but it's not the same. I think it'll be safe to say I could probably take a quarter inch off the whole thing. So I think it's just these points on this side, and then this side, it's touching, touching, and then it looks like it's touching in there too. And then it's touching hard all the way across here, so that all needs to come down. But once I get this little tab to touch flat, and that tab to touch flat, and then I'll be able to just weld it up.
All right guys, our frame rails are pretty much done. I'm happy with how they went, came out. So we just welded the front, welded it all around the front, welded around the back. Basically all the spots where I don't have to worry about the floor getting too hot. I welded the seat brace in here, seat brace here. So these things are pretty solid as is, but we still have to weld all across here. And I'm not gonna do that until the interior is out of the car. So for now, frame rails are pretty much all finished up. So we're gonna now shift our focus to the engine bay. I want to get started on the firewall and I have those heater lines coming out, these weird bolts, these bolts, throttle cable. So we're going to have to lower the car down now so we can get all that off the firewall before we start plugging up the holes and smoothing everything out. boy I love doing sheet metal work so we got almost all the holes plugged in the firewall I found a, uh, a nice giant MIG welded booger here so I grinded hammered and dolly from the backside got it all out of there it was just filled with Bondo and this is what you'll find sometimes there's quite a bit of body filler on this firewall I think what someone was trying to do is just give it a general smooth some paint shops will use a lot of filler primer and stuff like that on their cars so one thing you want to do when you're doing patchwork, when you're smoothing on a firewall, find an area where there's a commonality. And what we have here is this bend, this like break right here. So I'm going to cut this straight across, cut this up, cut this up, cut this all the way across here, come straight down and we'll have this weird octagon bottom. What we're going to do is we're going to break this edge. So we're going to keep this profile and go straight up to the top with it. And then from there, once this is flat and flushed up, then we're gonna keep create a patch to come in here and then we'll put a little break edge on the face to be able to bring this across. So this will look like it's, it was never like this. It was just flat across here and then flat all the way up. So when the engine's in here, it's gonna look really nice against the backs of the firewall. So right now we're gonna get this done and then start working on our strut towers. Our patch panel is just about done. We just have to put a cap on top of it and fill in this little hole where the original wiring went through. The trick that I like to do when I'm doing sheet metal is I'll do a series of tacks that are about a half inch away from each other. And then what you want to do is you want to back weld. Say you started here and welded there, and then you started there again and then welded there, and then started there again and welded there. You're starting and stopping at the hot spot. So what that's going to do is that's going to shrink the metal so you have wave 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 so what you do is you start from here and you go back and then you hit it with the air and then you go to the next tack which is ice cold and then you go back to where you started which is now cold because the hottest spot is going to be where you stop back hit it with air back hit it with air back hit it with air and then once you do it a little rough grind then you're going to use your hammer and dolly and then you're going to go right on the weld and it would stretch the metal and make it completely flat. At that point you just DA it and make it all smooth. So what we're going to do now is we're going to rough grind it all in, get this profile to look good all the way down. We'll make a little patch here, cap the top to this, and the firewall is pretty much done other than this hole here and we can start working on our towers. And then, finally, we can put a Hellcat motor in this thing.
All right, so we got our patch panel almost done. As you can see, it's kind of weird looking, but it's gonna go right there like that. So I gotta bend the edges down. Got a little bit more trimming to do, it looks like. We're gonna get this to fit in there a little bit nicer. Gonna do a full weld on it, and then we're gonna put our edge on the face so that it matches. So we're gonna get it just like that, close this bad boy up, and we're almost ready to put that in it. Oh boy. All right, top of the firewall is pretty much done and we got our whole delete done with our uh, windshield wiper motor recess. So we got one more hole left, which is where the factory throttle cable came through. And since this is gonna be fly by wire and we're gonna use uh, electricity to control the throttle body, we're gonna plug that hole and then we can finally work our way onto the frame rails. I already started doing the uh, passenger side frame rail and getting the strut tower ready and then we'll be ready to put the engine in, finally. I'm very interested to see if this supercharger clears the hood. So we'll end up taking this guy off. It's gigantic. But for right now, let's uh, get the firewall done. All right guys, engine bay is done and we're ready to put the engine in this Plymouth until I grinded away the paint on the driver's side frame rail. Now this is the passenger side frame rail. After we got done smoothing it all out and cleaning it up, there's a little weird divot here. I think that's a factory piece that's kind of like glued on, it's not welded, so we just blended it and smoothed it out. But the driver's side, yeah, the driver's side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to where it's flat. I'm gonna cut probably a quarter inch down, come all the way up, up, and put a fresh piece in right here. And then this is all mangled, where they had, they had probably this much Bondo built up here and it was like blended all into the skirt thing. And I could see someone's already been here before and tried to repair this, and they just did a horrible job. So we're gonna get that squared away first. Unfortunately, I can't get to that before we put the engine in, but Everything else is done. We smoothed out this, we remade our caps here. We got the back side of our frame rails done. Firewall is nice and smoothed out. I'm gonna probably put some direct to metal primer on all these spots before we put the engine in. But everything is nice and smooth. guys our engine bay is finally done and as you can see from the time lapse we went through some direct to metal primer 
over all of the raw metal pieces, all the metal parts, you know, just so it can stay like this until he's ready to get everything body worked and painted. It's gonna look awesome once it's all painted. So our frame rail repair is all done. Pretty pumped how that came out, as well as this side. So, let's talk about this engine real quick. I have some fancy paperwork here with a bunch of numbers on it. Basically, it's a 2021 Hellcat Red Eye 6.2 liter, 426, 10 to one compression ratio. H-beam rods, fully built motor, ARP head studs. Oh yeah, it's got a cam, new cam in it. It's got everything. Um, this is a three liter Whipple. Everything about this thing is way overkill for this car. So it's built for 1400 horsepower. It's got um, aftermarket heads on it. And it's got the supercharger that's the size of like a small Toyota engine or something like that. This thing is massive. A video is not gonna do this thing justice to how big this engine actually is. He said that it's good for 1400 horse, but this will probably, this setup will probably make somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 900 horsepower on pump gas, not on E85, on pump gas. So for this GTX, which is significantly lighter than a modern day Hellcat, this thing is going to boogie. So first things first, gonna get this super heavy supercharger off the top of the engine. We'll get our chains hooked up and get our cherry picker over in the corner over and get this engine off of the engine stand. Then what we gotta do is get the engine on the ground and then me and my bad back have to figure out how to get this three speed mocked up on that engine. So we'll probably be using the same bolts that the engine is being held on to the, to the engine stand right now just to do mock up. Um, and that's gonna get us down the road for our transmission um, brace, our transmission mount rather. So yeah, I'm thinking I'm gonna be able to probably swoop this thing in. Enough talking. Let's get this all set up and see what it looks like in the engine bay. All right, this ought to be fun. How to put a Hemi in by yourself, take one. Cause this is taking forever and it sucks ass. And this engine weighs a million freaking pounds. So I can't adjust this height very quickly. I hate working on cars. I hate working on cars. Do anything else. Do not work on cars. Don't get into it. Just work on anything else. Don't waste your time with cars. They're freaking stupid. There we go, baby. Look at that, boys and girls. Take a look at that. It is perfect, you know. When you do any sort of engine placement or any sort of custom swaps or engine swaps or anything like that, you wanna get the engine as far back behind your suspension points as possible. You want all that weight to be behind your suspension and the front wheels. And this thing is like an S2000 where you have the first cylinder basically in front of our steering line and the majority of the engines behind it. So. This would be perfect for some turbos. Comment below, say, Eric, let Tim twin turbo the GTX. Don't do a supercharger. Although, I was worried before about the supercharger sticking out of the hood. We have like a mile on placement. So I think the supercharger is actually gonna work out really well in this muscle car setup. So I don't know how I'm gonna get it in there, but we have to get it in there. Let's see what it looks like. Bad news, guys. The supercharger fits perfectly. Look at that. Holy crap. All right, forget turbos. I'm, uh, I'm pretty pumped on this. So if you can visualize the cowl line, we are like right there. So I might have to take like a rib out 
The hood comes like this and does a little, yeah, the hood's not completely flat because as you can see from this, this line here, if we came straight across, it's like right there. So I think we're gonna be okay. If it does hit, it's gonna hit so close that it's barely gonna take any trimming. Comment below and uh, let me know if, if you guys think it's gonna fit or not because we're not gonna be fitting the hood till next episode. And that brings me to the end of this episode, guys. I uh, appreciate you guys uh, sticking around. We're at 5,000 subscribers now. The DeLorean projects are rocking and rolling. And next episode, we're gonna be back on the wide body car as we have aptly called it Doc. So we're back on Doc next week and we're going to be upgrading the, uh, the car with some uh, new doodads and do doodles. Um, I'm so tired and, and wore out, I can't even think straight. But next episode with the GTX guys, we're gonna be doing some long tube stainless steel headers as well as figuring out a cold air intake for the supercharger and some sheet metal work here to close this out. And we're also gonna be getting all the accessories dialed in and we're gonna be getting a transmission brace put in so that the engine is nice and sturdy. As you can see, it's gonna be really fun doing two inch primaries out of these tiny little holes. This side, not so bad. So thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing and we'll see you on the next episode.